Good morning. Today I'm going to convert a printed circuit board using an ODB database into SOLIDWORKS. We're going to convert our ODB to parasolids. Our goal is to be able to do a thermal analysis on the board. This is a pretty simple two-layer board with some vias in between it. The same principles apply to multi-layer board. We start by putting our ODB file in a directory and creating two subdirectories underneath to hold our data. Now we'll run NetXG. And before we do anything, we'll check our preferences and make sure that we've defined the working directory where temporary files are stored and the output where our output data is going to go. Also make sure this says Leonov, and I've set the arc resolution quite high in order to minimize the number of faces that we'll generate in the final analysis. Now let's import our ODB. We can import a file or a directory structure. In this case we have a file, so click open, and there's our file. So the data has been successfully imported, and you can see there's a number of layers, but we only care about top electric, bottom electric, and drill. So those are the ones we're going to bring in. All right, they've been brought in. You can see the top and bottom are in the stack up and in between is a dielectric. Drill information has been brought in. What we need to do is make a small change. The client informed us that they had the wrong value for the dielectric. You see they have one tenth of a mil and actually they informed us that it was 36 mils. We're able to change these things if we need to in this property dialog. Now let's go to our output. The output format we want is 3DI, and we want to make sure that dielectrics are created, and we want our profile to be auto, which means it'll read the ODB outline. So now we've adjusted everything we need to, and we'll just click Execute. And it's done, and there was no errors reported, so we can close the log file. And now let's look at our output. This is our 3DI viewer. If you look, you can see that uh, there's the top of our board and there's the bottom of our board. I can s turn off the board and if I look in between, I can see my vias. So that's everything that I need. Now I want to create parasolids and import that into SOLIDWORKS. So I'll go File, Export, Parasolids for FEA. This is the special option that produces a better output for any kind of finite element analysis. Let's look at our settings. We're organizing our output by layer. We're going to remove any duplicate pins, which I don't think we have in this design. Don't need to expand the dielectric because it actually goes out past the metal slightly. We're going to generate negative dielectric on conductor layers. That means between the conductors on a particular layer, we're going to generate bodies needed to keep this surface completely flat. We're going to merge any vias with the same ID into a single cylinder. Now that's usually used just for multi-layer boards. We're going to replace our vias with polygons of eight sides. That will reduce the face count. And we're going to add via drill holes to the conductor so that when we put a via somewhere it drills the hole all the way through so there's a mating surface. Finally, we want our vias to be hollow cylinders, not solid cylinders. By checking this and giving a wall thickness, that's how they'll be implemented. Click Export and save the file. Uh, all done. And you can see if we look in our output directory, there's a 3DI file we created and there's the Parasolids XT file. Let's start up SOLIDWORKS and import our data. We're going to import our Parasolids file, so we'll say open. Let's select the Parasolids format and that's the file we just created. And we'll click OK. And there it is. So we can see our holes there, the big ones anyway. Right there small. And if we look at how our data is organized, we see that each layer is a part. So if we want to turn off all the parts and examine one at a time, we can do that. And now let's look at the top metal. And you can see that it's very clean data. It has the approximately one mil thickness that was assigned to it. There's holes there where the vias go through. Now let's look at the via layer. And there you can see the hollow vias that connect this layer to the bottom layer. And then we have our dielectric between the two layers. These are the interesting layers. Let's turn everything off but M1. You see that there's gaps here, air gaps, and those might not actually be there in a board if it's uh, pressed together. So what we've generated is the dielectric that goes between those to give us a planar surface. You can see that. We could color that the same color as this, but then we would have difficulty telling what was what. So 
So these are actually two different materials. And the reason we do this is some of our FEA customers have told us that they need a planar surface to apply their boundary conditions. And if there are those tiny gaps between the conductors, then that causes some problems for the mesher. So this is suitable now for FEA. Uh, you can mesh it, you can assign properties to the various parts and everything, and then do your analysis. Thank you.